Hello again, and now we are in session number three of the Cancer Prevention Program. In the first uh, two sessions, we talk about um, what is cancer and then the importance of cancer prevention in the country, in the United States, and in the world. Now we are going to talk about cancer screening. Remember that I mentioned that uh, the importance of screening is to find the cancer early. If you do so, you are doing the best treatment for cancer. If we find it at an early stage, the treatment is going to be very successful. Other conventional treatments for cancer are chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery. Of course, what I'm saying is that if you find it in an, in a, an earlier stage, probably surgery would do it. Or sometimes a radiation uh, treatment will eliminate uh, uh, and other types of, uh, of, uh, of treatment like uh, freezing or, or other um, procedures. But what I'm saying is that we need to find this if this is happening to us very early. So then this is what we call early detection. Now we go to Brazil and this is one of the things that uh, they did in a, in a shopping mall to show people uh, what is uh, that happens in, in, in the colon when the intestines to prevent colon cancer that um, as I mentioned here um, colon cancer is the second cause of, uh, of death, um, both for men and women in this country. And the, men, the main one would be lung cancer for males and breast cancer for females. And um, in Brazil also, the second cause of death um, is colon cancer. So mo we need to know more about that. And so they invented this huge, gigantic colon and then they would uh, bring a reporter uh, inside to show with a specialist in cancer to show the alterations that could uh, be inside of the cell that would uh, cause cancer and then they will bring people inside and then they will show them this is something that it might be inside of your colon so you need to have a treatment for that because a normal polyp Polyp is a little bit of, a, I would say, uh, looks like an earring uh, in, in your intestines with a small ball. And this uh, can be very innocent at first sight. But this can develop uh, after uh, 5 or 10 years and develop in a cancer cell. So this is something that um, uh, people should know about the prevention of colon cancer. Early detection, health is action, know how to prevent intestinal cancer uh, or colon cancer. That is what is uh, the uh, motto of, uh, of this um, uh, campaign that was done in Brazil to show people um, that uh, colon cancer should be prevented. The problem with uh, prevention of colon cancer is that people do not want to do um, the exams, the test for that. And mostly the test is um, colonoscopy. And people have an aversion for colonoscopy, mostly uh, um, males. So what happened is that many people postpone this test and, 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 and then when the cancer is found, it might be too late. I just heard about, uh, I was with a group of friends and I heard that uh, uh, um, one person had, uh, um, a male uh, friend had uh, colon cancer and one guy, um, because they, he was a, a, a nurse and then he said, well, that should not happen because this guy when he got the cancer was already stage three and it has formed a tumor and, and, and was going to the lymph nodes or, or the lymphatic organs around. 
And then uh, the nurse was saying, well, he never did a colonoscopy. So we should have an ability to do this test beforehand because it might save your life. It might save your life. If you are 40 or 50 years old and never have done a colonoscopy, I would advise to do so. We are going to come go back to this when we talk about colon cancer but even if you don't get to that uh, to that uh, uh, cancer when we discuss if you just uh, uh, watch this session you please if you are male or female you should have done your colonoscopy uh, mostly between 45 and 50 years old and if you have a history in the family worse if you have a history in the family, if you have uh, um, um, your diet um, that you do is more on the side of constipation, so your uh, intestines don't, you don't go to the bathroom every day, uh, then, uh, and then if you eat a lot of meat, and then if you smoke, and then if you are overweight, all of those are risk factors for colon cancer, so you should pay attention and do your colonoscopy. And then again, you might say, so now I have a video that will talk about um, colonoscopy. And then uh, they will talk about the steps uh, that, uh, and then what is the colonoscopy. Just for um, our audience to know that there is no big deal in doing a colonoscopy today and, and the tube is very thin. Uh, I remember in the past that they used a very thick uh, uh, for, uh, they used to do a sigmo sigmoidoscopy. A sigmoidoscopy was a kind of a tube that was uh, inserted in a person to, to, to check. But a colonoscopy is just a small wire and this is not a problem for a test at all. So let's see, let's watch the video now. Hello and welcome to the HealthStorm Center. I'm Dr. Manny. According to the CDC, colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in the U.S., but if people got a regular screening, as many as 60% of deaths could be prevented. So if you're 50 or older or have a family history of colorectal cancer, you should begin screening at regular intervals. Colonoscopy has become the preferred choice by doctors to screen for colon cancer. Now let's go into the body to see how a colonoscopy is performed. You will need to follow a bowel prep diet 24 to 48 hours before your colonoscopy. Before the procedure, you will be given an IV line for sedation and your vital signs will be monitored as well. The procedure is performed using an endoscope, which consists of a long flexible device with a light and video camera at the end. The endoscope also has instruments to perform biopsies and remove lesions. Now, here's the wide view of the large intestine. In some procedures, the doctor will only inspect the top of the descending colon. This is called a sigmoidoscopy. Now, in a colonoscopy, the endoscope reaches the entire length of the intestine to where it connects with the small intestine. During the test, your doctor will be looking for abnormalities in the mucosal lining of your gastrointestinal tract. These can be polyps, inflammations, or infections. This procedure is also done to diagnose unexplained intestinal pain, rectal bleeding, or a change in bowel habits. You may experience cramping or gas pain during the procedure. This is normal, but you should alert your doctor to any discomfort. Your doctor may find it necessary to take a biopsy. This will help distinguish between cancer and benign disease. Biopsies can be taken even if your doctor does not suspect cancer. If one or more polyps are discovered, your doctor will generally remove them in a procedure called a polypectomy. Usually a snare will be used to remove the polyp, then the base will be cauterized to control the bleeding. After the procedure, you will be monitored for about half an hour until the effects of the anesthesia wear off. Also, you will need to arrange for a ride home, especially if you get a full colonoscopy. Some of the other colon cancer screening tests include taking a yearly stool test to detect the presence of blood. If blood is found in the stool, a follow-up colonoscopy is usually performed. Also, there is an option for virtual colonoscopy, which is less invasive. But as always, you should always consult your physician for the best option for you. I'm Dr. Manny, Fox News. 
Now let's have a joke here. The doctor told his patient at the hospital, I have bad news and worse news for you. Well, tell me the bad first, please, the patient responded. You have only one day of life. What? What can be worse than that? Well, I forgot to tell you this yesterday. We're supposed to laugh about that. But um, it's just to relax a little bit. I know when we have cancer prevention, it's not an issue that uh, people really smile. It's very tense, it's very stressful, but we need to talk about that. But we need to have some moments of humor once in a while. So we are going to talk about early detection and then primary prevention, avoiding the risk factors of the disease. Early detection first. How can we detect the cancer very early? Usually we have a list of symptoms that are common to different cancers, but are uh, factors that are normal uh, or, or peculiar to cancer, like fatigue, weight loss, fever, night sweating, cough, cough with blood, vomit with blood, pain, diarrhea or constipation, urine with blood, any body secretions with blood. You might say, what? I have fatigue or I have weight loss or I have fever yesterday. We are not talking about uh, one episode of that. We are talking about uh, these symptoms that uh, they are insistent, they are consistent, they are repetitive, they are not going away. So when you have this happening to you constantly, and then you might need to check because it might be uh, related to, to develop a cancer. It might not, but uh, you should check. The seven warning signs of cancer are tradition uh, among doctors. So if you have any change in bowel or, or bladder habits, you should check. Mostly if it's something that uh, happened once in a while and then from that time on you, your, your intestines or your urine is not uh, normal, so you have to check. A sore that doesn't heal in your mouth or in your skin, um, if, if it is something that is constantly uh, hurting, so you should check. Um, if you have unusual bleeding, any parts of the body that have unusual bleeding or a discharge of blood, you have, uh, you have to pay attention. Like a menstruation that is not on the type, or, or, sorry, a menstruation that is not on the time of, uh, of the period to be uh, a discharge, you have to, to check. A thickening or a lump in the breast that um, you never uh, found before, or a, a thickening or a lump that you found er everywhere else in the body. Indigestion or difficulty in swallowing, it can be a sign of something uh, in the esophagus. Obvious changes in a wart or mole, so if you have a wart that uh, all of a sudden start growing, start getting uh, reddish around, or start uh, growing uh, um, abnormally, normally these warts that are very designed round are not a problem, but when they are like a map, they, we should check on that. And then nagging cough, uh, nagging cough, or hoarseness, when you start coughing and coughing, and, and is, is a very uh, deep cough. Uh, if you are a smoker, or if a person is smoking and have that, you should, the person should check. Early detection exams. So besides those symptoms, there are some exams that you can do, like for breast cancer, uh, we have the breast self-examination that one should learn how to do. Uh, many doctors or specialists are questioning that because they say that uh, we don't know how to do that by ourselves or the, the population do not know. I still advise that we do so. You learn uh, how your normal texture in your breast for women and uh, even men, I have uh, a friend uh, uh, two months ago that wa was diagnosed with breast cancer. He's a male 
person. So we should be able to uh, know if we uh, the normal breasts that we have, and then if uh, if uh, we do that uh, periodically, or every six months or so. If you find something developed there, you have to check. Another one is going to be the examination by the doctor. My, my main question on that, um, on the breast self-examination, that uh, people say that uh, uh, the doctors are saying that we should not do and, and, ask the, uh, and let the doctor do that, is because sometimes the doctor do not do it. And I, I remember for my wife, um, uh, she went to the doctor and she was complaining of some pain and the doctor sent for a mammogram, but never the doctor never touched her breast to see if there is anything there. And, and then I said, well, he, uh, she should at least take a look on that. But um, uh, that's, that's something that uh, you might need to ask the doctor if you are a female mostly, to, to, to examine if there is everything okay with the breast. Uh, especially uh, uh, if a person is 20 years and older, you should check uh, uh, every three years uh, to see if everything is normal. So after 40 years, and some places they mention about 50 years, I would say the best is after 40 years old, a person should do a mammogram. And then, uh, MRI would be more for those that have a high risk of cancer or have, um, or have a genetic history of uh, BRCA uh, positive. BRCA is another gene that is common in families that uh, are related to uh, breast cancer. <coughs> so should we do MRI or not? because MRI uh, mostly are not um, uh, uh, radiation. So many people say, okay, I would like to do an MRI instead of a mammogram. Um, usually, uh, is the, the, the test is used to uh, check lumps in the breast that remain after the treatment, so it should be more for follow-up. Um, or to check uh, uh, for breast lumps or enlarged lymph nodes uh, found during a clinical breast test or a breast self-exam that were not showing in the mammogram or, or, or ultrasound. So if a person has a lump or, or something and check in the mammogram and didn't show anything, um, the doctor might ask for an MRI. And then, uh, and then for uh, control, if a person uh, will do, a person has cancer and needs to uh, locate the, the cancer very well for surgery, they might use MRI. Why not doing mammograms for young women, younger than 20? Uh, why we uh, advise on the 40 and over? Because uh, young, young women will have a dense breast uh, um, and the tissue will appear white in a mammogram, and it, this might confuse with um, uh, uh, with normal tissues, and then uh, people or doctors will have a hard time to find uh, a cancer, uh, or, or think that is a cancer and it's not. Unless there is a high risk or a family history again, either a family history because you know uh, if, if, if your uh, mother have, have cancer, have had cancer, so you should do um, in, at young age, I, I mean after 20 years old. For colon or intestinal cancer, that is a, also a very common cancer, as I mentioned, second uh, most common cancer in the United States, they have uh, uh, several types of tests like you can check for occult blood, blood in the stools. Um, you, you can check the DNA to see if the cells in the stools are uh, with uh, changed DNA. Or you can do the sigmoidoscopy uh, or colonoscopy on, or even a barium enema or a virtual colonoscopy. That is a computerized uh, um, test uh, um, a computerized tomography of the intestine. So we should do every five years 
um, I mean, a colonoscopy if, if, if everything is normal every 10 years. Mostly we advise the colonoscopy. This is the most modern and most simple test for, for prevention of colon cancer and everyone uh, should be done uh, or should be doing that after 50 years, either male or female. This is uh, our advice. So virtual colonoscopy is a computerized uh, uh, test of the uh, of the uh, colon. Um, it's um, it's not the preferred uh, way because uh, uh, it's uh, it's a lot of radiation. Again, uh, radiation is uh, is a very interesting. You you do radiation to see cancer and to treat cancer, but radiation also can cause cancer. So we have to be careful with that. So it's still colonoscopy is better than virtual colonoscopy. Barioenema is mostly for places that uh, they don't have access to, um, to colonoscopy. So in, in, in some developing countries that uh, they don't have uh, the training for a colonoscopy, they should take barium, a barium solution, and then take a lot of x-rays, and the x-rays will show how the intestine, if it, there is any uh, protuberance in the, in, in the intestines and any tumors, any formation. So in my identify, is not, is not uh, totally um, correct, but when you don't have anything, it's better than nothing. It will detect about 30 to 50 percent of the cancer that will uh, be found by, by um, standard colonoscopy. For uh, uterus cancer, so this is one that we found when they have an abnormal discharge of blood or blood spots in the underwear uh, and check for family history if the person has a genetic factor. And, um, check for family history of intestinal cancer. So uh, sometimes there is a relationship between different types of cancers that you have in your family uh, with, with uh, the cancer. Like in this case, if, you're, uh, if you have intestinal cancer in the family, you might be at high risk of, uh, of uh, um, uterus cancer, um, the body of uterus. The uterus have two types of cancer the uterus cancer that is in the body and the cervical cancer that is in the lower part of the uterus that we call cervical cancer. How about uh, early detection for prostate cancer or we call the PSA test, prostate uh, specific antigen. Um, this is a marker for prostate cancer and should be normal um, below five. Usually the normal range between 1 to or 0 0.05 to 2 at most. And um, there is also a very discussion, very big discussion that this test should not be done anymore because there is a lot of false positives on PSA and then people go to biopsies and go to other tests that are uh, not, uh, uh, that are waste. Of, of testing. But uh, I would say that still uh, a person should have an idea, uh, a male after 40 years old uh, should have an idea of the PSA normal. But I believe, uh, and I have an experience with patients, when you have a, a, a previous value of PSA, like, like, let's say that is was 2, and then you do every year or every two years, you do a test and then you have the two, I mean, 1.5 and two, that's, that's fine. But uh, if one, once in a while or all of a sudden this value goes to five and six, that's not a good sign. And that's where the PSA is valid. You should do a little more testing. You should do um, uh, another, um, they have other types of uh, PSA that uh, they, they, they can check a little more specific if it is coming from uh, cancer cells or not. And then uh, you might need to do um, uh, some um, uh, local um, 
radiation uh, uh, or, or not radiation but uh, examination with x-rays and you might need a biopsy if, uh, if the, the, the tests are, are, are abnormal. So I still advise um, to, to do the prostate-specific uh, uh, antigen, and most of the doctors do so. Let's relax again. I know it's a very traumatic uh, um, place, but uh, it's good to go and observe nature. And nature, relax, control your immune system, drop your stress levels and improve your um, ways to fight against cancer. So continuing with uh, prostate uh, uh, PSA tests, I mean, if, if you are African-American uh, men that have a, a father history of uh, prostate cancer before 65, you should uh, check with uh, urologist and and you can start beginning your PSA at 40 years old. Usually we send people to PSA around 50 years old but uh, in this case uh, uh, yes they should do. Or if the PSA level for African Americans is 2.5 or higher um, they should refer to a urologist uh, and probably to take a biopsy. Is there any lung cancer screening? Well, the main lung cancer screening is if the person is a smoker. Then you can be uh, aware that maybe there is something there. And for smokers, chronic smokers, I would say you better do um, this tomography if you are smoking for, for more than 20 years. By the way, most of the cancer they take 10 years to develop. So it's very rare that a person starts smoking and in 10 years they will have a cancer. The, the cells will be transformed in 10 years and the tumors will form in a slow motion. I forgot to mention that when we did the first, uh, when we did the second session when we talk about what is cancer. Cancer develops slow, slowly. But if a person has uh, is smoked for 30 years, for sure he or she might have cancer cells there. And depends on their immune system, they might be having something in the lungs. They should check. It's, it's my advice. Again, let's relax. And this is in Brazil. I am from Brazil. This is the Iguazu Falls, uh, one of the biggest uh, waterfalls in the world. And... Um, Water somehow relaxes and, and water is, uh, is something that produces life and we need more life and we need more stress relief coming from nature. Um, cancer markers. There are some tests that you can do today that they call cancer mapping. So you can check uh, all of these uh, cancers. You can do a profile to see if you have um, uh, these substances in your body, uh, that uh, these markers are mostly um, uh, genes that they identify in your blood that can lead you. I would say uh, that is important when you have a history. So like if a person has a family history of breast cancer, then it would be good to do the CA 15.3 or the BRCA1 or 2. We are going to go back to talk about these markers when we go and study and, and discuss these cancers uh, individually. Remember, we will have lectures that we will talk about liver, ovary, breast, uh, pancreas, ovary, um, uh, colon, rectal, nasopharynx, and, and lung, and, 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 and other pancreas cancer and other ones uh, individually. And then we will go back to see what are the important markers and if a person should or should not uh, check for the markers. Well, cancer is a very tragic disease and then even if the cancer is in the terminal stage, there is hope. Because Jesus Christ said in the Bible, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me will live, though he were dead. Yet he shall live. 
and whoever lives or believes in me shall never die. And of course, Jesus was not talking about our normal lives in this world. He was talking about eternal life. So even in the terminal stages of cancer, you still have the hopes that one day you will never die and you will never have cancer again. Thank you once more. And we finish the three introductory sessions on cancer that are talking about um, uh, what uh, are the statistics on cancer in the world and in the country, what are the definitions of cancer, what are the mechanisms of cancer, and then the early detection of cancer. Now we will move to the other, um, to session number four, that will continue the cancer seminar. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.